I started working in MS research about 20 years ago when I was a resident in neurology. This is a big study we've um, done in Southern California where we essentially have taken the Osimmune study um, and added a few bells and whistles and we have repeated it now in the Los Angeles area where we have a lot of blacks and Hispanics who are affected with MS. Um, and we call it the MS Sunshine Study because it's really aimed at unraveling the complex relationship between sun exposure, vitamin D, skin pigmentation, and the influence of the risk on MS. And we also looked at genotype. We've made so much progress. Um, you know, 10 years ago, there were very few groups even trying to understand what caused MS. And now we have an explosion of groups, both in Australia, our group, a uh, group in Sweden, they're really trying, have been trying hard to uncover new risk factors and the interplay between the different risk factors. And I think that's on the road to prevention. The Australian researchers are the world's experts in sun exposure, UV radiation, and the link between that and vitamin D and the immune system. I and mean, there's no group that really can do it better. They've given it a lot of thought and really worked through I think almost every angle from A to Z, whether it's how, to, how best to measure sun exposure, how best to measure vitamin D, um, the effects of that on um, the immune changes in the skin, um, very detailed in vitro experiments looking at how it affects the immune system, and also very detailed genetic studies. So it's really, it's, it's just been a great opportunity to work with them and to learn from them. From an American perspective, the, the, the MS research community in Australia is, is a phenomenally collaborative group and they've made you know, an awful lot of progress in a relatively short period of time because they play really well together and um, have really come together to try and answer some of these bigger, more important questions, despite the fact that they have a relatively small patient population compared to much larger countries. I think they'll be the first group to really be able to definitively answer that question. You know, what is vitamin D supplementation going to be one of the key factors in helping get control the disease early? And if so, how much would they need to take to, to do that? We're certainly um, very close to being able to control the disease and being able to let people live normal lives the way we've done in the medical community with HIV.